Mandy Bish, work at the University of Missouri, and I'm an extension weed specialist. Okay, so a lot of times we focus so much on what's on the surface, like in anything, and that includes when we're trying to control weeds. We focus on what we can see, and we tend to forget about the things that are out of sight. In this case, those weed seed that are below the soil surface. And so what we're doing here is we're, our goal is to minimize the weed seed that is in the soil seed bank. So when I say soil seed bank, what I mean is the seed that is, has been deposited there. If you think about some of our most problematic weeds, uh, pig weeds such as palmer amaranth and water hemp are very problematic. And one plant has hundreds of thousands to a million seeds. If all those seeds end up in the soil, then you're increasing the pigweed seed in that soil seed bank, okay? So that's what we mean here. And so in this field, what we know we have, based on previous research, is we have a lot of morning glory and a lot of water hemp seed in our soil seed bank. The best way to tell what your soil seed bank consists of is by taking soil cores, and um, we tend to grow ours out, so we'll grow them out in a, a tray just to see what's there and get a count on what is in our soil seed bank. If we can deplete the soil seed bank or those weed seed that you don't see, so you don't think about, then it's going to make our reactive control of what we can see, it's going to make it less if we can minimize the seed in the soil seed bank. One important thing to consider when we're talking about the soil seed bank is how long seed can remain viable once it is in the soil. We have pig weeds that can remain viable for up to four or five years, but then there's research showing seed like cockleburr can remain viable for up to 80 years once it's in the soil. So that's another reason that it's so important to consider the soil seed bank and what weeds are present in it and what weeds may emerge. Right now in Missouri, our situation is most all of our water hemp is resistant to glyphosate and to ALS inhibitors, so that's two sites of action of chemistry. We do have populations that are resistant to more. In fact, we have a six-way resistant population, so in that area, we're really running out of chemicals to use, and we need to include these or integrate additional tactics. 